<laughs> yeah. So, you know, Generation Z are kind of born with that understanding. And it's funny because in Amsterdam last week, there was a whole uh, one hour dedicated to understanding the new market of people consuming these products. And uh, the research is saying that, I'll, I'll just give you a small example. The Generation Z will jump products. So they'll change from their favorite breakfast cereal to another breakfast cereal if they're not happy with the packaging alone. So if the packaging is not environmentally friendly and it's not good for the environment and good for them, they won't support that brand any longer, despite them even enjoying the product. So their priorities are less selfish than the generations that have come before them. And um, so we've, trying to, we've kind of built our product range around that the success of everybody on this planet going forward is uh, creating products and consuming products that are good for our bodies. Because when they're good for our bodies, our minds function better, our brains function better, we make better choices, right? That's, the, that's what our job is. But also, are we leaving a positive legacy or negative legacy in the marketplace? Are we putting out loads of plastic into the environment that's not biodegradable or recyclable? Are we creating a problem in the environment or are we part of the solution of, of the, uh, uh, in the environment? So our business is part of the solution from a packaging perspective. And then from a nutritional perspective, it's critical. Uh, if you don't get optima, optimal nutrition into your body, how do you expect it to function properly? Um, and so less is more is our policy. So you actually need less of our food to get more nutrients in versus uh, empty calories that you're getting from a, a lot of cheap food out there. Um, I, I'm not claiming that our fresh earth products are going to be the only products that you're going to have in your cupboard. They're not. You know, there's space for everybody and we, we take care of just certain segments. But our brand, Fresh Earth, is all about creating awareness and conscious cons uh, consuming. Think twice about who you're buying it from. Is it good for the body? Is it, are the people that made the product, are they being taken care of this? Because it's your money that is going to go support that, uh, that company that made those products. And are there, are, is the environment being looked after? There's a whole lot of factors that are important now that 20 years ago weren't as important. Um, and uh, our job as Fresh Earth is to kind of take care of that for the consumer. So when you buy our granola, it's in recyclable packaging. It's the best nutrient-dense granola you're going to find. And at the same time, it's super tasty. I hope that answers the question. <laughs>
So this morning, <laughs> she had butter chicken <laughs> and brown rice as her breakfast. She doesn't. She doesn't. She's not programmed into having convenience breakfast, which are the bre- the box cereals, which are, 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 in my category, they're classified as fast food. It's junk food. It's fast food. It's convenient. It's easy, and it's not the best you can put in your body. So she will have crushed, uh, smashed avo on toast. She'll have a. Uh, scrambled eggs she'll have a leftover whatever leftover was the night before it could be leftover pesto pasta it could be a baked potato <laughs> she'll warm up from it. so the point of introducing a child from a young, very young age to the right textures and flavors of food that is close to nature is critical because to undo it us as adults find it very difficult to not be addicted to refined carbohydrates and refined food. So white bread, for example, once it's delicious. A fresh baked white bread with peanut butter and jam on is delicious, but it's not the best you can get into your body. So it's a treat. It's not a it's not what we should be having on a daily on a daily basis. Now you try you introduce your child to a refined white bread as their main food and then and you tell they develop an allergy or they get sick at a later stage in their life. And you say to them, no, no more white bread. You're gonna have this uh, a whole bran bread and you haven't taught them that that's what the textures are, they're going to reject it. So you're essentially setting them up for failure. You, you, you're making it more difficult and you're not being the best possible parent you could possibly be. right? So introduce your child to real food, salads, fruit, lots of vegetables, whole grains. Stay away from the white stuff. Until a little, leave the white stuff for at Granny and Grandpa's house, and the white stuff for at the birthday parties or at school. Don't talk about it in the negative. And but your home is your sanctuary for the nutrients. Introduce them from a young age to real food, and uh, you'll see. So the fear that they're going to eventually uh, uh, move to the junk food that never happens. Like it, my daughter Isabella has never uh, uh, reverted back to refined junk food even though it's there i see her eating it but it's not she's not uh it's not her staple she defaults to a salad and defaults to brown rice and defaults to whole grain bread because that's it's 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 almost like brainwashed her (laughs) it's it's what it's all she knew so i programmed her neural pathways consciously so for her it's the normal and the white bread is the abnormal so can you see how how I've swapped it around, right? So it's a critical thing, introducing your children to real food, especially now. You know, food is your medicine. If you want your body to function properly, you want your body, your mind to function optimally, you know, two-thirds of the nutrients you put into your body goes to feed your brain. If you're putting in sub-quality nutrients, so you're not going to think right. You're going to make poor decisions for yourselves. Make a, you know, make, it's actually making life much more difficult than it needs to be. Eating nutritional dense food uh, uh, is a is a step up, but it helps you. It's a, it really can help you uh, in life. It's not a step backwards, and it ends up being cheaper in the long run because you, you you hardly see doctors. I mean, Bella has been on. I think if I if I, my memory says she's been on one course of antibiotics. She's fifteen years old. She never goes to the doctor. Never ever goes to the doctor. Ever ever ever. Because her immune system is so solid, and that is from introducing her from the right age, from from day dot to good nutrient dense food. So people say that this kind of eating is expensive. It's not really in the long run. The amount of money I've saved on doctor bills is profound. Far exceeds what I've actually spent on good quality nutrients. Yeah, so I mean, not particularly on our products, but the science of nutrition is growing so rapidly and changing so much. I mean, as that's the that's the beauty of modern man right now is that uh, we're becoming better and smarter, and we're able to analyze and understand food and nutrients and the human body and the relationship of different proteins and. And ingredients and and how the, how bioavailable they are, how easily are they absorbed into our bodies, and also differentiate between snake oils. You know, like our industry 
attracts a lot of snake oil experts <laughs> that are able to uh, uh, sort of claim that their product is a silver bullet. You know, we don't do that. Our food, our food is not the silver bullet. It's not going to save you from uh, from everything, and you're not going to become super enlightened just because you're eating whole grain, organic, close to nature food. It's just one of the levers. It's one of the tools that you uh, you will use to make yeah take care of your body so you can take care of getting on with your life there's there is hundreds and hundreds of studies that say that that tell that food that is grown properly organically and naturally not necessarily only organic but naturally where the soil has been taken care of properly where the animals have been fed properly where the animals have been treated properly is much more nutritious than uh the, the sort of modern farming methods that we that we following now. In fact, a lot of the farmers are backtracking. You know, we've just had Zach Bush here in South Africa. He's one of the foremost experts. Uh, he's a do- he's a medical doctor. But he's an expert on soil and microorganisms in the soil and and helping farmers undoing a lot of the chemical farming that they're doing and reintroducing the more natural farming of biodynamic farming and the relationship of having animals on your land um, that that are, are putting nutrients back into the soil and, and cross growing different types of crops at different types of year to bring nitrates into the soil so there's a big movement in that so there's no question that uh, uh, there's tons and tons of science this is not we're not just making this up we're not just trying to make a sale here these are facts and earlier on i touched on that less is more this kind of eating you you actually eat less you 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 eat less food because it's more calorie rich it's more nutrient dense and um, your body is 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 satisfied um because of the quality of nutrient that you're getting into your body So typically we work on three days in Johannesburg. We can do it in one to two days. Uh, Cape Town, it's three days. However, having said that, sometimes because of the quality uh, component of our business is we wait on our facility to manufacture. So your order will come in and the order goes straight to our manufacturing. It actually in many cases gets made to order, which then adds a day on. So uh, our our policy is the quality first. Uh, and so sometimes instead of it bringing, being at your doorstep in one day, it might be two to three days, and some days four days if we've had to get, if we've had to manufacture it. We don't like to hold too much stock on our shelves. Um, so no more than four days. Worst case scenario, five days if there's load shedding and we've, we've lost a, a day in manufacturing. <laughs> But, but four days, and we've got a nationwide footprint. You can get your product. We'll get it to you anywhere in South Africa.